In part two of this beginner Adobe Illustrator series, we'll take the water molecule from part one and create this watery scene and create this. In this tutorial, we'll work with transparent objects, create and use symbols, and introduce brushes. If you haven't completed part one of this series, I recommend going back to that tutorial and creating the initial water molecule. You can find the link above. In this video, we're going to take the water molecule we created in part one of this series and duplicate it many, many times. So in Illustrator, if you just copied and pasted this and you know had a hundred of these water molecules, it would create a very large file. And so instead, we're going to take this object, this water molecule, and we're going to turn it into a symbol and then we can reuse that symbol many times without increasing the size of our file very much. So this water molecule is a little bit big. Um, and so the first thing I'm gonna do is scale it down. And so I wanna make it about the size that I want for the uh, front layer of the final illustration. So I'm gonna take this. And so to make a symbol, you go over to your palettes over here. The, the color swatches are right here and the symbol is right next to it. And you're going to just, this, this is super simple. You're just going to take your object and pull it onto the palette and you get that little green plus sign over there and let it go. And then you'll get a menu that comes up where you can name your symbol. And I'm just going to call this water molecule. and hit OK. So now we have our water molecule symbol and we can use that as many times as we like uh, in our illustration. And the next thing we're going to do is create four layers. And let's go ahead and do that. And these layers are going to hold the various um, bunches of water molecules and we're going to use those layers to create an illusion of depth to this, to our illustration. So let's start on this top layer. I'm going to call this the super close layer and we'll do this layer last. It, those are going to look like they're so close that they're out of focus for you. And then we'll do our foreground. And then we'll do a middle layer. and a background layer. So I'm going to start with the foreground layer and to make more of these water molecules on your uh, illustration, all you have to do is click on the symbol and drag it onto your scene. And you can pull as many of these in here as you want, remembering that we're going to have two other layers of water molecules behind this. So you don't want to pull in too many um, and so, okay, so those all have, you know, are at exactly the same angle and look exactly the same. So you can just, you know, make them a little bit more random by turning them, rotating them. Some of them can hang off the edges like this, but you want it be because, you know, in water, in a cup of water, the water molecules are going to be at different angles. So I'm going to pull maybe a couple more on here. And remember, you don't, you don't need too many because we are going to have a bunch more behind this. Okay, ooh, those are about the same angle. Let's, let's tweak that a little bit there. There we go. Next, we're going to start adding some depth to this illustration. And so the, the easiest and quickest way to copy or to, to get your next layer of water molecules is to simply select them all. And so we'll, and then I'll copy them. And then I'll select my middle layer and just paste them there. And I'm now going to lock my foreground layer so I can't change it. And then I'll select, let's see, yep, I can select that one. So now I'm just going to move these around in between the molecules I already have. And you want to continue to make this illustration look somewhat random. Okay, 
And so, you know, these right next to each other, of course, don't look random at all. And so I'm just going to move more, some of these molecules around and I may, um, I may need to add a few more molecules too. Let me if I pull this someplace else, Maybe pull this one over here. And I'll just continue doing this until I have kind of a random arrangement that I like. Okay, and I, I feel like I need maybe one or two warm molecules on here. So let's plop that in. And you can see I'm letting some of them hang off the edge. And, and that's going to give it actually a more realistic appearance. Okay, so now those, all of these look as though they're sort of in the same plane of view. And we want that second layer, that middle layer, layer to look like it's towards the background. So let's open that up and we've got all these symbols, these water symbols in it. And if I click this top button here, I can select all of those. And what I'm going to do is make these a little bit smaller and then make them transparent. And that's going to start to give the illusion of depth. So I'll just grab this corner and hit shift and option or alt and shrink those down a little bit like that. And then, so now you can see that, okay, well, we might need a little bit, a few more in here because now I've shrunk them. And I'm of course gonna mess with them a little. I mean, you know, you can mess with these as long as you want because it's really easy to wanna keep messing around with them. Okay, so I'm gonna select those again and I'm gonna change the transparency of the molecules on that layer. So up at the top is the opacity and all I'll do is click that and I'll slide it down to, let's see what 80 looks like. You can also type that in whatever number you want in the box above there. Okay, so can you see that they're both smaller and um, not as bright as that front layer? And that, that's part of what starts to give this illusion of depth. So now we'll add one more layer in the distance, in the far distance, that's really gonna give this even more of an illusion of depth. And so let's go ahead and I'm gonna select all of those symbols and then I'll just copy and paste them like I did the last time onto the background and I'm going to lock the middle layer so I can't touch those, do anything to them. And let's see if we can find some molecules. You know what? I'm actually going to hide these so I know which ones I'm, I'm selecting. And for some reason, that molecule looks really big. In comparison, it is really big. If that one did not get shrunk, I'm just going to delete that because I don't want that. So I'm just going to move these around a little bit so I can tell where they are relative to the other molecules. And it actually might be simpler. Actually, I know we're gonna need some more of these molecules in here too. And so what I'm gonna do is just copy, I'm gonna select maybe these four, and then I'm gonna copy and paste them because then I know they're all gonna be the right size. Okay, okay so let me, um, unhide these two layers and let's figure out where our little molecules are and let's move those around and again I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to rotate these um, into different positions so they look more random than they do now and sometimes it can be a little difficult to find the right molecule so I'm just going to continue doing this until I get these arranged in a way that I like And you can have these overlap too. There's nothing wrong with that because the, the water molecules would obviously overlap each other if they're fading into the distance. Okay, let's see if we can get maybe a couple more down in here. 
Okay, so let's take that. And so now again, I'm going to select all of the objects in that layer. And you can, because we have everything else locked, you can either grab a box around it that will grab all of those, or you can select the dot next to the, la the layer that you want to select all the objects. And again, I'm going to shrink these a little bit and I'm holding, well, actually, let's do this a different way. Let's go up here. We're going to go into the object menu and we're going to go transform, transform each. And what this will do is keep the center of the object where it is when you transform it instead of shrinking them all together. And so let's, let's knock this down. Let's knock this down 80% in both the horizontal and the vertical scale. Okay, so now they look pretty tiny. I like that. And then again, we're going to change the transparency. We put the other transparency at about 80%. So we're going to want this even lower. So they look like they're farther in the distance. Let's try 60% and see how that looks. I think that's a little pull that up just a little bit. Let's try 70. Okay. And then you can, again, you can mess around with the position of these once you've got the, once you have all those molecules on there, you can kind of mess around and like, yeah, you can do this for a long time because it's, you know, you'll want to make your perfect random water molecules. And now the last layer that we're going to work with is the super close layer. So I'm going to go ahead and lock all of the other layers so I can't change them and then select the super close layer and I'm going to pull two water molecules into this layer and you can, you know, if you get a little space somewhere, you can, I'm going to put them in opposite corners like this and, you know, rotate them again as you like. And then we're going to make these, these are going to appear to be very close to you. So I'm going to make them fairly large and they don't have to be the same size. You can, you know, determine they should be again, a little bit random. And then let's select, I'm going to select this larger one in the corner. And what I'm going to do is add something called a blur so that it looks like it's, it's so close to you that it's out of focus. And there's two ways to find the blur that I want. You can go into the effects menu up here and down to blur. And I normally use the Gaussian blur. So let's select that. And we'll get this little palette here, this new menu. And go ahead and click preview so you can see what you've got. And you can see how blurred that is. And I may even, I like how blurred that is. So that's at 5.5 pixels, but you can mess around with this. You can increase it. You increase it too much, it's just a blob and you can't tell what it is. You decrease it and it's still pretty sharp. So that was about five and I like that there. So I'm going to hit OK, but I actually think I want this to be a little bit bigger. Like that. And then I'm going to do the same process to this other large molecule over here. And I suspect I'll want that, that one larger also. So let's do that. And instead of using the object menu up here, or the effects menu, sorry, we're going to use, come down into this appearance panel, and there's this little FX down here, and if you click it, you get a menu, and on the, it's the same menu as up in the FX menu, and you can take blur, Gaussian blur, and this is going to apply, let's click, click this, this is going to apply the same blur to this water molecule as on this water molecule. So let's go ahead and click OK there. Okay, so now we've got all of our water molecules set up. And the next thing I'm going to work on a little bit is the background to make it a little bit more interesting. So on this background layer, I'm going to use two techniques to make it look just a little bit more interesting. So the first thing I'm going to do, I want to lock my super close molecules, and then I'm actually going to go and hide all of them too. So we only have our background layer. So let's select our background layer. And you probably saw that I had that locked also. Um, 
and I'm going to add a very subtle gradient to this layer. So we're going to go into, let's make sure I've got this blue that I like. So I can save this color of blue by pulling it, grabbing it and pulling it onto the swatches palette. So I've got that blue there because probably when I add my radial gradient, it's going to change it to gray, which is not what I want. So now I can just pull this blue and I'm actually going to pull it on. Oops, we don't need to change the settings on that. Let's cancel that. I'm going to pull this onto both ends and you can see there's no gradient there, obviously. And so I'll select this blue and then use my sliders and just lighten it up a little bit. And you can see now it's got sort of a subtle gradient to it. And if you wanted, you could take the gradient tool, which is over here, and the keyboard shortcut is G. And you could select it and you could move it to the side a little bit so it's not perfectly centered. So that's one of the techniques that I like to use to make the background a little bit more interesting. Another technique you can use is to actually use um, a stroke with an artistic um, brush added to it. So I'm actually going to take, I'm not even going to use the brush stroke, I'm just going to uh, take the pen tool, which is keyboard shortcut P, and I'm going to put just some random line through here because we're going to add, we're going to change this to an artistic brush and, oh dear, okay, let's lock this background so I don't select it. And so this has got the same um, characteristics as the background and we do not want this blue gradient. What we want is, I'm even going to take, I'm going to take this kind of bright blue because because we're gonna we're gonna make this very very subtle, so let's look at the stroke. Just increase the stroke so we can see that. And now, I'm gonna take one of the brushes. So you've got this menu up here for basic, and if we um, let's get in here, and let's go to the artistic brushes, and we'll just select this one. Oops pull that back onto the screen. There we go. It was hiding down on my other monitor. And so now you've got all these possible brushes you can change this stroke to. And these little arrows down here will take you through a number of different kinds of um, things that you can change this stroke to. So like say I just randomly chose that. That's not what I want for this, but, but you can see that there are just a bunch of brushes hidden under here. So I'm going to go back to this ink spot one and select, let's try this. And I'm going to also increase the weight of the stroke. Make pretty big splotches like that. I know, I know that looks horrible right now. I understand. Um, what we're going to do is change the opacity of this. I'll knock this way down. You got those, and they still look pretty splotchy, which I don't want. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll add this Gaussian, Gaussian blur to this so they kind of fuzz out, and I want them even fuzzier. So they're just sort of these, this kind of delicate pattern in the background, and I'm actually even going to decrease the opacity here so that they're, it's just a very subtle effect in the background and it's not going to compete with our water molecules for what you see. I mean your brain can tell that it's there but you're un unless you really looked at it you wouldn't know but it just adds a little bit of complexity to this scene. And that is so that's our finished water molecule scene. In part three, the final part of this series, you'll learn to export your water scene and water molecule in a variety of ways. If you're enjoying this series, give this video a like and subscribe to this channel below.